Hey, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. Here we go. We are doing a whole new unit here. This unit is on chemical reactions, and there's five uh, videos in this series. The first one is today, and that is prediction of the five basic types of chemical reactions. So here we go. Bam! Okay, so the five basic types of chemical reactions. Number one, it's, e it's a double displacement a double replacement, or a metathesis. Those are the names of this type of chemical reaction. So let's figure out what that pattern is, because this, is, this whole unit is really all about recognizing patterns. So the pattern is a plus and a minus, and a plus and a minus. And do you know what state of the union that is? That's right, that's California. All right, so now that you got that that's California, so you got the symbol for California, and that is a C and an A. And hopefully you remember back to nomenclature, and that is a C and an A. The C stands for a cation, the A stands for an anion. Everybody good with that? Okay, so now what we're going to do to come up with the products, the pattern is the following. We're going to combine the anion from the first California and the cation from the second California. Combine those together, that's going to be one product. Remember, you always have the cation first, then the anion second. Okay, and then we're going to take the cation from the first compound and the anion from the second com compound and combine those together. And that will be your other product. But you will always, if you're in California, you stay in California, so your products are going to be that same way. Here's another way of looking at it mathematically. Remember that uh, math operation you do crisscross applesauce? Here we go. Here is crisscross applesauce. And you should see the same pattern that we did with the two Californias there below. Here's the products. See how you have a cation and an anion and a cation and an anion. And they are switched. Remember, the cation comes first, the anion comes second, always. So that is a double displacement, a double replacement, or a metathesis, depending on what your textbook goes for. All right, let's go for the next one. Okay, oh, wait, one more thing here, and that is one of the products on a double displacement reaction is either going to be a precipitate, heat, or gas. All right, fantastic. Number two. Number two is a single displacement or a single replacement, also known as a substitution reaction. So let's find out what the pattern is here. There's actually two different ones here. So this is the first pattern. You have a cation anion with an element. Cation anion with an element. Okay, and you're going to get a new cation and a new anion with a new element. Okay, and so if the element is a metal, it will displace the cation. Make sure you know that, because metals form cations. Okay, here's the second pattern. You have a cation and an anion, and now the element is now going to be a nonmetal. The nonmetal is going to displace the anion. So there, that pattern is as follows. And you always end up getting a California and an element. A California and an element. All right, fantastic. That's number two. Single displacement, single replacement, or a substitution type of reaction. Okay, the next one is a combustion reaction here. Okay, and I'm going to have a carbon and a hydrogen plus O2. The O2 is molecular oxygen. Remember, it's diatomic. Remember your diatomics? That's an L on your forehead. That gives you a 7, and therefore there are 7 diatomics. The carbon, there's an X, and a hydrogen, there's a Y. And the X and the Y can be any number you want it to be. Notice that above the arrow, there's a delta sign, and that means that heat is necessary for this reaction to go forward. And all combustion reactions will have the same products, and those products are carbon dioxide and water. All right? There are two different patterns on combustion reactions that are typical, and here is the other pattern. The other pattern is that you have a carbon, hydrogen, and an oxygen plus molecular oxygen. So it's carbons, H, hydrogens, Y, uh, oxygens, Z. So X, Y, and Z can be any number, but you also have to have molecular oxygen. And again, again above that arrow, you're going to have a delta symbol. And the products, again, are really super simple. For every combustion reaction, they're always the same, and bam! And that is a carbon dioxide and water. Okay? Everybody got that? So that's reaction type number three. All right, we've got two more to go, so let's check that out. Okay? So um, one other thing with the combustion reactions is you are always going to balance the combustion reactions in the following order. You're going to first balance the carbons, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens. Diatomics are always balanced at the end. Okay, So make sure you note of that. It's really simple if you balance these as far as carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, always in that order no matter what. Okay. Number four reaction type is a decomposition or an analysis type of reaction. 
So the decomposition reaction is the easiest type of reaction to figure out what type it is. Because it's the only of the five types, it's the only one of the five types that has only one reactant. So if you see only one reactant, it's a decomposition reaction. You always need heat input to make this reaction proceed forward, and that's why there's a delta above the arrow. And a decomposition reaction, you have two products. You have at least two products. Typically, one of the products is going to be a gas, all right? And you typically have this pattern of a California or an element plus a gas. That's going to be your pattern, okay? So the gases that you typically get are either going to be oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, or sulfur dioxide gas. We'll do many examples, and then you can see how that pattern uh, uh, unfolds. Okay, the fifth type of reaction is a combination reaction or a synthesis. And you should see that this synthesis is going to be exactly opposite that of a decomposition. It's kind of like the cycle of life is the decomposition and the combination synthesis. So the synthesis, you're going to take two things together and you're going to slam them together and you get one. Bam! That's what you get. Okay? All right, so those are the five different types of basic chemical reactions. All chemical reactions fall within those five basic types. Okay, here is another type of special combination synthesis reaction, and that is if you have a gas and you bubble it into water. That A in that gas is going to be a non-metal. So, for example, it could be carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, something like that, and it's going to be a combination reaction, and you're going to get an acid. And you, on these acids, you're going to have the hydrogens written first, the non-metal in the middle, and the oxygens on the outside. And that's going to be aqueous because it's going to be an acid in solution. All right? Fantastic. So here are eight different reactants of chemical reactions. Now the first step here, here is to figure out what type of reaction it is. So there's always a pattern in which you need to follow. We're looking for those patterns. So that first one on number one, I have a cation and an anion. If I have a cation and an anion, it's a double displacement, double replacement, metathesis type of reaction. All right? Number two. Number two. Number two, I have iron by itself, and then the copper nitrate. Um, the iron is an element by itself, and the copper nitrate is a California. So that's going to be a single displacement reaction. Okay? That iron is going to displace what? The copper, because the copper is a cation in this case. All right, the next one, we have chlorine and sodium iodide. The chlorine is an element. It is diatomic, because it's one of the seven diatomics, and the sodium iodide is a California. So that also follows the pattern of a single displacement reaction, except for this time, the element is a nonmetal. That nonmetal of chlorine is going to displace not the sodium, but it's going to displace the iodine, because the iodine is acting as an um, anion. The next one, number four. So number four is a C and an H plus molecular oxygen. So that molecular oxygen is kind of a hint here for you, but that C and the H ties it all in together. So if you have a carbon and a hydrogen, any number of carbons and hydrogens, that's why the X and the Y plus molecular oxygen, that's a combustion reaction. Bam. Okay, this next one, number five. Number five is really, you only have one reactant. So you only have one possibility. Okay, since you have one reactant, you have one possibility of the type of reaction, and that is going to be a decomposition or an analysis type of reaction. Okay, all right. Number six is a little bit difficult to figure out what type it is. So you're going to ask yourself, is there a California? The answer is no. Is there carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens? The answer is no. Is there one reactant? The answer is no. So because there's no California, it cannot be a single displacement or a double displacement. Because there's not carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, it cannot be a combustion. And since there's not one reactant, it can't be a decomposition. So you're only left with one type of reaction left over, and that is a combination or a synthesis reaction. Okay, the next one, I have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens for number seven, and I have molecular oxygen. Again, that molecular oxygen is a clue, but then I'm going to look at the other reactant, carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, carbon, hydrogens, and oxygens, X, Y, Z, any number, molecular oxygen, that is obviously, hopefully, a combustion type of reaction. All right, the are our eighth one and last one on this slide here, I have an element, that's the lead, and the oxygen, and I might think, oh, wait, molecular oxygen, it could be a combustion reaction, but it's not following the pattern of the combustion reactions that we had before, and that is carbons, hydrogens, and oxygen, so it's not a combustion. Because there's no California, it's not um, a single displacement or a double displacement. 
So it doesn't follow any one of these, and there's not one reactant. So again, I'm left with one, only one type of reaction that it can be, and that is a combination or a synthesis. All right? Hopefully that works for you. You first have to figure out that pattern in identifying the type of reaction that will really help you out in writing down the products, which is going to come later on this unit, and then subsequently balancing those chemical reactions. Okay? All right, so don't go away. I am the Crazy Hat Chemist. That was the first video in chemical reactions. The next video is going to be on solubility rules and an activity series. I can't wait for those. Can you? All right, talk to you later.